Introduction to Microsoft Azure AZ 900. Microsoft Azure is a cloud computing platform with an ever expanding set of services to help you build solutions to meet your business goals. Azure services support everything from simple to complex. Azure has simple web services for hosting your business presence in the cloud. Azure also supports running fully virtualized computers managing your custom software solutions. Azure provides a wealth of cloud-based services like remote storage, database hosting, and centralized account management. Azure also offers new capabilities like AI, artificial intelligence, and Internet of Things, IoT focused services. In this course, you will cover cloud computing basics, be introduced to some of the core services provided by Microsoft Azure, and will learn more about the governance and compliance services that you can use. So why should I take Azure Fundamentals? If you are just beginning to work with the cloud, or if you already have cloud experience, this course provides you with everything you need to get started. No matter your goals, Azure Fundamentals has something for you. You should take this course if you are or you have a general interest in Azure in the cloud, you want to learn and earn official certification from Microsoft AZ 900. AZ 900 domain areas. So we have domain areas and the weight on the exam. So we have the described cloud concepts. This has a weight of 25 to 30%. We have described Azure architecture and services. This is 35 to 40%. We have the Describe Azure Management and Governance, and it, which is 30 to 35%. I will see you in the next lecture. Describe Cloud Concepts. In this section, you will be introduced to general cloud concepts. You will start with an introduction to the cloud in general. Then you will dive into concepts like shared responsibilities, different cloud models, and explore the unique pricing method for the cloud. If you are already familiar with cloud computing, this module may be a larger review for you. Now, learning objectives. After completing this section, you will be able to define cloud computing, describe the shared responsibility model, define cloud models, including public, private, and hybrid, identify appropriate use case for each cloud model, describe the consumption-based model, compare cloud pricing models. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next lecture. What is cloud computing? Cloud computing is the delivery of computing services over the internet. Computing services including common IT infrastructure such as virtual machines, storage, databases, and networking. Cloud services also expand the traditional IT offerings to include things like Internet of Things, IoT, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Because a cloud computing uses the internet to deliver these services, it doesn't have to be cons constrained by physical infrastructure, the same way that a traditional data center is. That means, if you need to increase your IT infrastructure rapidly, you don't have to wait to build a new data center. You can use the cloud to rapidly expand your IT footprint. Thanks for watching. Describe the shared responsibility model. Azure shared responsibility model. You may have heard of the shared responsibility model, but you may not understand what it means or how it impacts cloud computing. Start with the traditional cooperating data center. The company is responsible for maintaining the physical space, ensuring security and maintaining our or replace the servers if anything happens. The IT department is responsible for maintaining all the infrastructure and software need to keep data center up and running. They are also likely to be responsible for keeping all systems batched and on the correct version. So with the shared responsibility model, this responsibility gets shared between the cloud provider and the consumer. Physical security, power, cooling, and networking connectivity are the responsible of the cloud provider. On the other hand, the consumer isn't co-located with the data center, so it wouldn't make sense for the consumer to have any of those responsibilities.
At the same time, the consumer is responsible for the data and the information stored in the cloud. You wouldn't want the cloud provider to be able to read your information. So the consumer is also responsible for access security, meaning you only give access to those who use it. Then for some things, the responsibility depends on the situation. If you are using cloud SQL database, the cloud provider would be responsible for maintaining the actual database. However, you are still responsible for the data that gets ingested into database. If you deployed a virtual machine and installed an SQL database on it, you would be responsible for database batches and updates, as well as maintaining the data and information stored in that database. With an on-premise data center, you are responsible for everything. With cloud computing, those responsibilities shift. The shared responsibility model is heavily tied into the cloud service types. Covered later in this course, infrastructure as a service, IaaS, platform as service, PaaS, and software as service, SaaS. IaaS, or infrastructure as a service, places the most responsibility on the consumers with the cloud provider being responsible for the basics of physical security, power, and connectivity. On the other hand, of the spectrum, SaaS plays most of the responsibility with the cloud provider. SaaS being middle ground between IaaS and SaaS, rests somewhere in the middle and eventually and evenly distributes the responsibilities between cloud provider and the consumer. The following diagram highlights how the shared responsibility model informs who is responsible for what depending on the cloud service type, okay? So here you can see that the responsibility here, you can, we have the Microsoft, we have the customer, we have this means shared, all right? Now the responsibility always retained by the customer here. You can see that the responsibility, information and data, devices and mobile PC, accounts and identity. So for information data here, you can see for the SaaS, it is for the customer, for pass it is the customer everything here you can see that everything here for uh, is responsible on the customer it is the customer's responsibility but on the other hand here if you can see that responsibility varies by type so for example identity and directory infrastructure you can see for the SaaS it is shared for the pass it is shared IaaS and on-prems no it is on the customer for the applications, you can see the SaaS is completely on Microsoft. Here you can see that it is completely on Microsoft. Here the pass is shared and and so on. Okay, so the network controls here is it is on Microsoft itself because this is the SaaS after all. Operating system, the SaaS is for Microsoft and pass is for Microsoft. Otherwise, the IaaS and on-premise is that is the customer's responsibility. Here, you can see that the responsibility transfers to cloud provider. So for example, we have a physical hosts, we have physical network, we have physical data center. So you can see that the SaaS, the PaaS, the IaaS are responsible, are the Microsoft responsibilities. Okay, so you can see that blue here, which means that it is Microsoft responsibility. On-premise, of course, if you can see that everything on-premise is the customer responsibility. After all, it is their own hardware, their own data center, their own network, okay? You will always be responsible for the information and data stored in the cloud, devices that are allowed to connect to your cloud, cell phones, computers, and so on, the accounts and identities of the people, services, and devices within your organization. The cloud provider is always responsible for the physical data center, physical network, physical hosts, and so on. Your service model will be determine responsibility for things like operating systems, network controls, applications, identity and infrastructure, and so on. Thanks for watching. Define cloud models. What are cloud models? The cloud models define the deployment type of cloud resources. The three main cloud models are private, public, and hybrid. Let's start with the private cloud. A private cloud is, in some ways, the natural evolution from a cooperative data center. It is a cloud delivering IT services over the internet that's used by a single entity. Private cloud provides much greater control for the company and its IT department. However, 
It is also comes with a great cost and fewer of the benefits of public cloud deployment. Finally, a private cloud may be hosted from your on-site data center. It may also be hosted in a dedicated data center off-site, potentially even by a third party that has dedicated that data center to your company. Public cloud. A public cloud is built, controlled, and maintained by a third party cloud provider. With public cloud, anyone who wants to purchase cloud services can access and use resources. The general public availability is a key difference between public and private clouds. Hybrid cloud. A hybrid cloud is a computing environment that uses both public and private clouds in an interconnected environment. A hybrid cloud environment can be used to allow private cloud to search for increased temporary demand by deploying public cloud resources. Hybrid cloud can be used to provide an extra layer of security. For example, users can flexibly choose which services to keep in public cloud and which to deploy to their private cloud infrastructure. So here, the key comparative aspects between the cloud models. For the public cloud, no capital expenditure to scale up. For the private cloud, organization have complete control over resources and security. For the hybrid cloud, provides the most flexibility. So for the public cloud, applications can be quickly provisioned and deprovisioned, and the organization pay only for what they use. The organization do not have complete control over resources and security. For the private cloud, on the other hand, data is, con is collocated with other organization data. Hardware must be purchased for startup and maintenance. The organizations are responsible for hardware maintenance and updates. For the hybrid cloud, organizations determine where to run their application and organization control security, compliance, or legal requirements. We have the multi-cloud. A fourth and increasingly like, likely scenario is a multi-cloud scenario. In multi-cloud scenario, you use multiple public cloud providers. For example, Azure, AWS, GCP, and so on. Maybe you use different features from different cloud providers, or maybe you, you started your cloud journey with one provider and are in the process of migrating to a different provider. So regardless, in a multi-cloud environment, you deal with two or more public cloud providers and manage resources and security in both environments. The Azure Arc. Azure Arc is a set of technologies that helps manage your cloud environment. It can help manage your cloud environment, whether it's public cloud solely on Azure, a private cloud in your data center, a hybrid configuration, or even a multi-cloud environment running on multiple cloud providers at once. Azure VMware solution. What if you already established with VM in a private cloud environment, but you want to migrate to public or hybrid cloud? Azure VMware solution lets you run your VMware workloads in Azure with seamless integration and scalability. Thanks for watching. Describe the consumption based model. So when comparing IT infrastructure models, there are two types of expenses to consider capital expenditure cap X and operational expenditure op X. CapEx is typically a one-time upfront expenditure to purchase or secure tangible resources. A new building, repaving the parking lot, building a data center, or buying a company vehicle are examples of CapEx. In contrast, OpEx is spending money on services or products over time, renting a con convention data center, leasing a company vehicle or signing up for cloud services that are example of OpX. Cloud compute falls under OpX because cloud computing operates on a consumption based model. With cloud computing, you don't pay for the physical infrastructure, the electricity, the security or anything else associated with maintaining the data center. Instead, you pay for the IT resources you use. If you don't use any IT resources, this month, you don't pay for any IT resources. This consumption-based model has many benefits, including no upfront cost, no need to purchase and manage costs 
infrastructure that users might not use to its fullest potential the ability to pay for more resources when they are needed the ability to stop paying for resources that are no longer needed with traditional data center you try to estimate the future resource needs if you overestimate you spend more on your data center than you need and potentially waste money if you understand underestimate your data center will quickly reach capacity and your application and services may suffer from decreased performance fixing an under provisioned data center can take a long time you may need to order receive and install more hardware you will also need to add more power cooling and networking for extra hardware but in the contrast in cloud based model you don't have to worry about getting resource needs just right if you find that you need more virtual machines you just add more if the demand drops and you don't need as many virtual machines you remove virtual machines as simple as needed either way you are only paying for the virtual machines that you use not the extra capacity that the cloud provider has on hand so let's compare cloud pricing models Cloud computing is the delivery of computing services over the internet by using a pay-as-you-go mod pricing model. You typically pay only for the cloud services you use, which helps you plan and manage your operating costs, run your infrastructure more efficiently, scale as your business needs change, and so on. So instead of maintaining CPUs and storage on your data center, you rent them for the time that you need them. The cloud provider takes care of maintaining that underlying infrastructure for you. The cloud enables you to quickly solve your toughest business challenges and bring cutting-edge solutions to your users. To put it to another way, cloud computing is a way to rent compute power and storage from someone else's data center. You can treat cloud resource like you would re resources in your own data center. However, unlike in your own data center, when you're done using cloud resources, you give them back. You are built only for what you use. Thanks for watching. Describe the benefits of using cloud services. So as introduction in this section, you will introduce to some of the benefits that cloud computing offers. You will learn how cloud computing can help you meet variable demand while providing a good experience for your customer. You will also learn about security, governance, and overall manageability in the cloud. The learning objectives after completing this section, you will be able to describe the benefits of high availability and scalability in the cloud, describe the benefits of reliability and predictability in the cloud, describe the benefits of security and governance in the cloud, Describe the benefits of manageability in the cloud. Thanks for watching. Benefits of high availability and scalability in the cloud. When building or deploying cloud application, two of the biggest considerations are uptime or availability and the ability to handle demand or scale. High availability is when you are deploying an application or any IT resources, it's important the resources are available when needed. High availability focuses on ensuring maximum availability regardless of the distribution or events that may occur. When you are architecting your solution, you will need to account or for service availability guarantees. Azure is a highly available cloud environment with uptime guarantees depending on the service. These guarantees are part of the Service Level Agreement, SLAs. Scalability Another major benefit of cloud computing is the scalability of cloud resources. Scalability refers to the ability to adjust resources to meet demand. If you suddenly experience peak traffic and your system are overwhelmed, the ability to scale means you can add more resources to better handle the increased demand. The other benefits of scalability is that you aren't overpaying for services because the cloud is consumption-based model, you only pay for what you use. If demand drops off, you can reduce your resources and thereby reduce your costs. Scaling generally comes in two variants, vertical and horizontal. Vertical scaling is focused on increasing or decreasing the capabilities of resources. 
horizontal scaling is adding or subtracting the number of resources. Vertical scaling is when if you were developing an app and you need more processing power, you could vertically scale up to add more CPUs or RAM to the virtual machine. Conversely, if you realized you had more specified the needs, you could vertically scale down and by lowering the CPU or RAM specifications. Horizontal scaling is if you suddenly experience a steep jump in demand, your deployed resources could be scaled out, either automatically or manually. For example, you could add additional virtual machines or containers scaling out. In the same manner, if there was a significant drop in demand, deployed resources could be scaled in, either automatically or manually scaling in. Thanks for watching. Benefits of reliability and predictability in the cloud. Reliability and predictability are two crucial cloud benefits that help you develop solutions with confidence. So for the reliability is the ability of system to recover from failures and continue to function. It is also one of the pillars of Microsoft Azure well-architected framework. The cloud by virtue of its decentralized design naturally supports a reliable and resilient infrastructure. With a decentralized design, the cloud enables you to have resources deployed in regions around the world. With this global scale, even if one region has a catastrophic event, other regions are still up and running. You can design your applications to automatically take advantage of this increased reliability. In some cases, your cloud environment itself will automatically shift into different region for you with no action needed on your part. You will learn more about how Azure leverage global scale to provide reliability later in this series. Predictability. Predictability in the cloud lets you move forward with confidence. And it can be focused on performance predictability or cost predictability. Both performance and cost predictability are heavily influenced by the Microsoft Azure well-architected framework. Deploy a solution that's built around this framework and you have a solution that's cost and performance predictable. Performance predictability focuses on predicting the resources needed to deliver positive experience for your customers. Auto scaling, load balancing and high availability are just some of the cloud concepts that support performance predictability. If you suddenly need more resources, auto scaling can deploy additional resources to meet the demand and then scale back when demand drops. Or if the traffic is heavily focused on one area, load balancing will help redirect some of the overload to less stressed areas. Cost. Cost predictability is focused on predicting or forecasting the cost of the cloud spend. With the cloud, you can track your resources used in real time, monitor resources to ensure that you are using them in most efficient way, and apply data analytics to find patterns and trends that help better plan resource deployment. By operating in the cloud and using cloud analytics and information, you can predict future costs and adjust your resources as needed. You can even use tools like total cost of ownership, TCO, or pricing calculator to get an estimated of potential cloud spend. Thanks for watching. Benefits of security and governance in the cloud. Whether you are deploying infrastructure as service or software as service, cloud features support governance and compliance. Things like set templates help ensure that your deployed resources meet cooperate standards and government regularity requirements. Plus, you can update all your deployed resources to new standards as standard changes. Cloud-based auditing helps flag any resource that out of compliance with your cooperate standards and provides mitigation strategies. Depending on your operating model, software patches and updates may also automatically be applied, which helps you which helps with both governance and security. On the security side, you can find cloud solutions that match your security needs. If you want maximum control 
of security infrastructure as service provides you with physical resources but lets you manage the operating systems and install software including patches and maintenance if you want patches and maintenance taken care automatically platform as service or software as service deployments may be the best cloud strategies for you and because of the cloud is intended for as an over internet delivery of IT resources, cloud providers are typically well suited to handle things like distributed denial of service DDoS attacks, making your network more robust and secure. By establishing a good governance footprint early, you can keep your cloud footprint updated, secure, and well managed. Thanks for watching. Benefits of manageability in the cloud. A major benefit of cloud computing is the manageability options. There are two types of manageability for cloud computing that you will learn about in this series, and both are excellent benefits. Management of the cloud speaks to manage your cloud resources. In the cloud, you can automatically scale resource deployment based on your need, deploy resources de based on pre-configured template removing the need for manual configuration, monitor the health of resources and automatically replace failing resources, receive automatic alerts based on configured metric so you are aware of performance in real time. Management in the cloud speaks to how you are able to manage your cloud environment and resources so you can manage these through a web portal, using a command line interface, using APIs, using PowerShell. Thanks for watching. Describe cloud service types. In this section, you will be introduced to cloud service types. You will learn how each cloud service type determines the flexibility you will have with managing and configuring resources. You will understand how the shared responsibility model applies to each cloud service type and about the various use cases for each cloud service type. So the learning objectives after completing this section, you will be able to describe infrastructure as service IaaS, describe platform as service PaaS, and describe software as service SaaS. And you will identify appropriate use cases for each cloud services, IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. Thanks for watching. Describe infrastructure as service. Infrastructure as service IaaS is the most flexible category of cloud services as it provides you with maximum amount of control for your cloud resources. In IaaS model, the cloud provider is responsible for maintaining the hardware, network, connectivity to the internet, and physical security. You are responsible for everything else, operating system installation, configuration and maintenance, network configuration, database and storage configuration, and so on. With IaaS, you are essentially renting the hardware in cloud data center. But what you do with that hardware is up to you. For the shared responsibility model, applies to all the cloud service types, IaaS plays the largest share of responsibility with you. The cloud provider is responsible for maintaining the physical infrastructure and its access to the internet. You are responsible for installation and configuration, batching and updating, and the security. So let's have a look here. So you can see that currently you are the IaaS here. So you can see that the blue, the customer here, you can see that the IaaS is for information and data. It is your responsibility. The devices, the accounts is your responsibility. The identity and directory infrastructure is your responsibility. Here you can see that on the table of IaaS. The application is your responsibility. Network controls is your responsibility operating system is your responsibility so you can see that all of that is your responsibility okay but the physical host the physical network the physical data center here is the, the cloud microsoft azure responsibility so let's have a some scenario so some common scenario where i ask might make some sense include lift and shift migration you are standing up cloud resources similar to your on-premise data center and then simply moving the things running on-prem to running on the IaaS infrastructure. Testing and development, you have established configuration for development and testing environments that you need to rapidly replicate. You can stand up or shut down the different environments rapidly with IaaS structure while maintaining complete control. Thanks for watching.
Describe platform as service. Platform as service or PaaS is a middle ground between renting space in data center infrastructure as service and paying for complete and deployed solution software as service. In PaaS environment, the cloud provider maintains the physical infrastructure, physical security, and connection to the internet. They also maintain the operating system, middleware, development tools, and business intelligence services that make up a cloud solution. In past scenario, you don't have to worry about the licensing or batching or operating system and databases. BAS is well suited for, to provide a complete development environment without the headache of maintaining all the development infrastructure. So let's have a look on the shared responsibility model. The shared responsibility model applies to all the cloud service types. BAS splits the responsibility between you and the cloud provider the cloud provider is responsible for maintaining the physical infrastructure and it, uh, its access to the internet, just like in IaaS. In the PaaS model, the cloud provider will also maintain the operating system, databases, and development tools. Think of PaaS like using domain joint machine. IT maintains the device with regular updates, patches, and refreshes. Depending on the configuration, you or the cloud provider may be responsible for networking settings and connectivity within your cloud environment network and application security and directory infrastructure so here let's have a look you can see that the pass here we are in the customer we we are responsible for information and data devices mobile pcs and accounts and identities as you can see in the table of pass but for the identity directory infrastructure as you can see it is shared between microsoft the cloud provider and customer the same as applications the same as network controls but the operating systems here you can see that microsoft is responsible for it the physical host physical network physical data center unlike the IaaS, the IaaS here you can see that the operating system is the customer's responsibility but in past no the operating system is microsoft responsibility so let's have some scenario so some common scenario where past might make sense include Development framework. PaaS provides a framework that developers can build upon to develop our custom or customize cloud-based applications. Similar to the way you create Excel macro, PaaS lets developers create application using built-in software components. Cloud features such as scalability, high availability, and multi-tenant capability are included, reducing the amount of coding that developers must do. Analytics or business intelligence tools provides a service with pass allow organization to analyze and mine their data finding insights and patterns and predicting out income to improve forecasting product design decision investment returns and other business decisions thanks for watching describe software as service software as service is the most complete cloud service model from a product perspective with SaaS you are essentially renting or using fully developed application, email, financial software, messaging applications, and connectivity software are all common examples of SaaS implementation. While the SaaS model may be the least flexible, it's also the easiest to get up and running. It requires the least amount of technical knowledge or expertise to fully employ. So for the shared responsibility model, it applies to all the cloud service types, so SaaS is the model that places the most responsibility with the cloud provider and the least responsibility with the user. In SaaS environment, you are responsible for the data that you put into the system, the devices that you allow to connect to system and the users that have access. Nearly everything else falls to the cloud provider. The cloud provider is responsible for physical security of data centers, power network connectivity and application development and patching. So here, let's have a look here. So you can see the SaaS for the customer. He is only responsible for the information and data, device and mobile CTBCs, accounts and identity, as you can see. And the identity and directory infrastructure, it is shared. Here you can see that the SaaS is shared, okay? Other than that, it is the cloud or Microsoft Azure responsibility so like the applications network controls operating system physical host network and data center so let's have some scenarios some common scenarios of SaaS are email and messaging 
Business Productivity Applications, Finance and Expense Tracking. Thanks for watching.